Modern MotoGP machines are generating up to 70 kilograms of downforce at full tilt. That's at speeds of around 350 kilometers per hour. But how does that even work on a bike that leans over 60 degrees through corners? It sounds like something out of an engineering paradox, yet it's happening right now, race after race. What's the secret behind those tiny wings, the fork-mounted flicks, the underbelly ducts, and the batwing tails? Get ready for a deep dive into the complex cutting edge world of MGPT aerodynamics. The aero war begins, history of MotoGP aero. The idea of putting wings on a motorcycle might seem like a modern phenomenon, but the roots go way back, all the way to 1972. That's when MV Agusta first started experimenting with winglets. And surprisingly, they weren't too far off from what's being seen today. Of course, the real aero war didn't kick off until Ducati brought their GP15 to the grid in 2015. That bike made the rest of the paddock sit up and stay down, thanks to its aggressive stubby nose and side-mounted wings. Riders quickly realized how much more stable the front end felt. Engineers realized they had just opened Pandora's aerodynamic box. By 2016, the aero conversation was everywhere. Then came 2017, and with it, the first real crackdown. MotoGP's governing body decided enough was enough and banned protruding wings mainly for safety reasons. Too many pointy carbon elements were flying around during crashes. That didn't stop teams. The solution? Integrate those wings directly into the bodywork. Enter the era of the biplane fairing, the downwash ducks, and the swing arm spoon, which Ducati introduced at Qatar in 2019. Initially controversial, the device was taken to MotoGP's Court of Appeal and ruled legal. From that moment, any part of the bike with aerodynamic effect fell under the strict scrutiny of homologation. And despite the limitations, manufacturers found new ways to push the envelope. Ducati, Aprilia, KTM, Honda, and Yamaha, all in the game. The battlefield shifted from just engine performance to a high-stakes aerodynamic arms race. Front winglets, not just for looks. When people think of MotoGP aerodynamics, the front winglets come to mind first and for good reason. These aren't just cosmetic add-ons or borrowed F1 parts slapped onto motorcycles. They serve a crucial purpose, stopping the front wheel from lifting during brutal acceleration. Unlike Formula One, where wings create grip for cornering, MotoGP front winglets are mostly about keeping the bike down the straights. These bikes accelerate so hard that they naturally want to wheelie, especially with their high center of gravity. The winglets push the nose down, letting riders go full throttle without losing control. Placement matters. That's why teams mount them as far forward as the rules allow. The further forward, the more leverage they have over the rear wheel. Think of it like a seesaw. The greater the distance between the winglet and the rear axle, the more effective the downforce becomes at preventing front lift. The wings usually come in a biplane configuration. That's two tiers stacked vertically maximizing surface area within the tight constraints of the fairing regulations. And the faster the bike goes, the more pressure builds, generating more downforce. That becomes especially helpful during braking zones where the added grip on the front tire helps stabilize hard deceleration. But nothing in racing comes free. These wings also introduce drag, slightly reducing top speed. That's the trade-off and it's one team's are constantly tweaking with every update. Some teams, like Aprilia, have started introducing small openings or cutouts in the wing structure itself to manage airflow more efficiently without sacrificing pressure. The aero teams then make subtle changes to match the rider's needs without overstepping the regulations. Even the angle of attack, the pitch of the wing against the wind, is dialed in to fractions of a degree too much and the wing stalls too little, and it does nothing. There's also a cooling benefit. 
Some front winglet designs help guide air away from the tire and toward the brake ducts, improving thermal management under heavy use. When brakes get too hot, performance fades, so keeping that system cool is just another advantage of clever aero. MotoGP isn't just a horsepower game anymore, it's a pressure and airflow game, and the front winglets are now playing the role of silent enablers, letting these bikes go harder, brake later, and launch off corners with more confidence than ever. The lean angle challenge? Down force at 64 degrees. Here's where things get crazy. MotoGP bikes aren't just going fast in a straight line, they're carving corners at lean angles up to 64 degrees, sometimes even more. So what happens to downforce when the bike isn't upright anymore? Well, it doesn't just disappear, it changes direction. Those horizontal winglets suddenly become nearly vertical when the bike is leaned over. The force they produce isn't pushing down anymore. It's pushing sideways, which actually helps stabilize the bike mid-corner. That sideways pressure is gold during aggressive leaning. It improves cornering stability, keeps the tires loaded, and gives riders the confidence to carry more speed through the bend. The airflow doesn't behave nicely though. The rider's body starts to block one side of the bike, disrupting the vortex that flows off the inside winglet. Meanwhile, the outside winglet catches more clean air and continues generating force. That's why teams are developing fork-mounted vortex generators, small fin-like flicks near the suspension that help redirect turbulent air around the rider's body. Aprilia, for example, has focused on shaping the belly pan to create a Venturi channel that accelerates airflow and lowers pressure beneath the bike. This isn't theory, it's a direct lift from F1-style aerodynamics. Even the rider's elbow shoulder and knee placement can affect the efficiency of that airflow. That's why some riders tuck in tighter mid-corner, not just for ergonomics, but to streamline how air passes along the inside edge of the bike. Ducati's downwash ducts also come into play here. By scooping turbulent air and firing it under the fairing, they reduce side turbulence and restore clean air to the bodywork. This clean airflow helps the trailing edge of the fairing do its job, either creating downforce or improving radiator cooling depending on the design. The modern arms race, latest aero developments. While most of the spotlight lands on the front winglets, the real action in 2025 is happening at the back of the bike, where Ducati and Aprilia are waging a fresh aero battle. Ducati has pushed rear-end aerodynamics into new territory, Instead of just mounting wings on the front, they found a new playground, the seat area. And this isn't just about tossing a wing on the tail, the structure is smart. Ducati's latest setup uses a cascade of horizontal elements, usually three or four, merging into two vertical winglets. These aren't just slapped on, the horizontal pieces angle sharply forward, working well under heavy braking when pitch angles are high. That's when rear-end downforce plays a huge role in stability. The vertical fins kick in mid-corner. When the bike leans and airflow changes direction, these help maintain side stability. Think of them like airplane tails, working to stop the rear from stepping out. Ducati's cascades also support the upper Stegosaurus-style fins, allowing more aggressive shapes, almost like an F1-style beam wing. Aprilia quickly responded with a more refined solution, mounted lower just below the seat. It uses a pair of horizontal elements for straight line stability and a vertical in-washing fin that channels air toward the bike's center, reducing wake behind the rider. Aprilia tested different combinations, single elements, dual cascades, and end plates designed to fine-tune drag and flow behavior. The tail section is evolving. Tucked between the Stegosaurus fins is a clean horizontal wing meant to stabilize the rear under braking and prevent side-to-side -side motion. The result is a calmer bike under stress, especially in the hands of Jorge Martin and Marco Bezzecchi, Aprilia's headline signings for 2025. These riders are more open to radical aerodynamic ideas than the last generation and they're already using every gram of downforce available. 
the RSGP25 also brings other updates, a reshaped front wing, redesigned fork-mounted aero, a new S-duct, and a butterfly-shaped carbon scoop under the oil radiator for cooling and aero control. The lower fairing has been sculpted for maximum ground effect at full lean, with a step-shaped edge and vertical profile designed to activate a Venturi channel. The idea, accelerate airflow beneath the belly to create low pressure and suck the bike toward the ground, just like in F1. At the rear, Aprilia's focus on heat management stands out. With these bikes generating intense race heat, engineers added a five-element grill system to push hot air downward, away from the rider. Hidden ducts now send fresh air to the exhaust and the fuel tank, helping with both performance and reliability. It's no longer just about top speed or braking. Every wing, duct, and fin now plays multiple roles. Cooling, grip, stability, and drag reduction, all crafted through endless hours of wind tunnel testing, simulations, and rider feedback. Why aero matters more than ever? There's a reason why aerodynamicists are now some of the highest paid people in motorsport. Just like in Formula One, they're becoming as valuable as the riders themselves. MotoGP's evolution has reached a point where the engine development is so tightly regulated that aero has become the new frontier, you know, the last wild west of performance gains. And that's where the current generation of machines stands. Ducati, Aprilia, KTM, Yamaha, and Honda are all deep into wind tunnel testing, patent filing, and rule interpretation. What used to be simple plastic fairings are now active battlegrounds for computational fluid dynamics, airflow redirection, and micro-sculpted surfaces that channel air with surgical precision. But change is coming. The 2025 season sees no regulatory shift in aerodynamics, but that's just the calm before the storm. From 2027, MotoGP's premier class will undergo one of the biggest rule shakeups in modern history. Ride height and hole shot devices, gone front fairing width, slashed by 150 millimeters, rear height limits, lowered. And only one aero update will be allowed per season. The message is clear. The aero war, as we know it, is going to be heavily restricted. If this deep dive into MotoGP aerodynamics got the gears in motion, don't forget to hit that like button and share this video with fellow racing enthusiasts. For more high-performance breakdowns, tech explainers, and raw racing insights, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. Let the downforce war continue.